In the previous video, we talked about the difference between hemoglobin and myoglobin in terms of structure, roles, and oxygen saturation curves. We also discussed the two conformation of hemoglobin. In this video, we will talk about the allosteric factors of hemoglobin. Before we start talking about allosteric factors, you must know that hemoglobin is an allosteric protein. What that means is hemoglobin has two receptor sites one for the ligand and one for the allosteric effectors. And when an allosteric effector binds to a protein, it induces a conformational change in the protein structure affecting the ligand affinity in a positive or negative way depending on the type of the effector molecule. For example, when a positive allosteric effector binds to a protein, it induces a change in the protein structure making the active site available for the ligand. But when a negative allosteric effector binds to a protein, it induces a change in its structure making the active site unavailable for the ligand. In hemoglobin, oxygen is the ligand, and when an activator or a positive allosteric effector binds to hemoglobin, it induces a conformational change in hemoglobin structure, increasing its affinity to bind more oxygen and thus stabilizing the relaxed state, knowing that the R state of hemoglobin has the highest affinity for oxygen. Please refer to the previous video for more details about the hemoglobin conformations. And when a negative allosteric effector, also known as inhibitor, binds to hemoglobin, it induces a conformational change in hemoglobin structure, decreasing its affinity for oxygen and thus stabilizing the tense state. Allosteric effectors can also be classified as homotropic and heterotropic. In case of homotropic effectors, the ligands act as an allosteric effector. For example, binding of an oxygen at one side of hemoglobin increases the affinity of hemoglobin for binding oxygen at another side, shifting the hemoglobin conformation from T to R state. And we said previously that when an effector increases the affinity for the ligand, it's called a positive effector. So oxygen is a positive homotropic effector. Whereas, when a substance other than the ligand acts as an allosteric effector, such as the proton, the carbon dioxide, a molecule called 2.3 biphosphoglycerate, we call them heterotropic allosteric effectors. Next, we will see how these effectors will decrease the oxygen binding affinity for hemo of hemoglobin, and thus they will be considered as negative heterotropic effectors. In the next slides, we will talk about how each of these heterotropic effectors will affect the hemoglobin binding affinity for oxygen. Let's start with the heterotropic effect of proton. But before that, you have to keep in mind that hemoglobin exists only in two conformations, a high affinity R state and a low affinity T state. And when the partial pressure of oxygen is high, as in the lungs, the R state of hemoglobin is favored, allowing the maximum amount of oxygen to be bound to the hemes. In the capillaries, where the oxygen concentration levels are lower, the T state of hemoglobin is favored in order to facilitate the delivery of oxygen to the tissues. So what happens in acidic environment, such as in the case of actively metabolizing tissues releasing protons? This released protons will bind to oxyhemoglobin in red blood cells, promoting the release of oxygen from hemoglobin to the tissues, stabilizing the T state. In fact, when the proton binds to hemoglobin, it protonates the imidazole group of histidine that participate in a salt bridge with a negatively charged aspartate. The formation of this ionic bond holds the structure of hemoglobin together, stabilizing the T state of hemoglobin. Now let's see how the proton binding to hemoglobin will influence the oxygen saturation curve. In acidosis, when the pH is low due to a high concentration of H+, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will decrease, so the P50 will increase because they are inversely proportional. And this effectively causes a shift to the oxygen saturation curve of hemoglobin. The second heterotropic allosteric effector that we're going to talk about is carbon dioxide. CO2 is an important end product of oxidative metabolism. So let's see how it will modify the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin.
In fact, 70% of CO2 released from peripheral tissues is hydrated by carbonic anhydrase to carbonic acid. This weak acid dissociates partially to H plus and H2O3 minus. The bicarbonate ion produced moves to plasma in exchange for chloride ion to maintain electron neutrality, and this is known as the chloride shift. While the degenerated H plus bind to hemoglobin, like we saw in the previous slide, stabilize the T state and promote re the release of oxygen to tissues. 20% of the carbon dioxide react with the amino uh, ter uh, termina of the hemoglobin allosteric site to form the carbamino hemoglobin that stabilizes the T state and promote the release of oxygen to tissues. And the remaining 10% of CO2 will be dissolved in plasma. So what we conclude is that when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will decrease and thus the T state of hemoglobin will be stabilized. Now let's see how the binding of carbon dioxide to hemoglobin will influence the oxygen saturation curve. In the following example, we have three curves with three different partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The green curve has the lowest PCO2 equal to 20, and the orange curve has the highest PCO2 equal to 80 mm of mercury. As you can see, when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases from 20 to 40 to 80 mm of mercury, P50, which is the partial pressure of oxygen at 50%, saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen, increases from 23 to 30 to 38 mm of mercury respectively, shifting the curve to the right. So, when the partial pressure of CO2 increases, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen decreases, the P50 increases, and the curve will shift to the right. In contrary, when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen increases, the partial pressure P50 decreases, and the curves will shift to the left. For now, we saw that carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions are two heterotropic allosteric effectors of hemoglobin. They bind to different sites on the hemoglobin molecule, stabilize the T-state of hemoglobin, and lower its affinity for oxygen. This, in turn, shifts the oxygen binding curve to the right side and allow hemoglobin to unload more oxygen to the exercising tissue. Together, the effect of hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide on hemoglobin is known as the Bohr effect. Next, we will talk about the third heterotropic allosteric effector, the 2.3 biphosphoglycerate. 2.3 biphosphoglycerate is synthesized from an intermediate in the glycolytic pathway in human red blood cells. It's a negatively charged molecule that binds to a pocket formed by two beta-globin chains in the center of deoxyhemoglobin, stabilizing the T-state. This pocket contains several positively charged amino acids like histidine and lysine that form ionic bonds with the negatively charged phosphate groups of BPG. So, BPG binds to a central pocket in T-state of hemoglobin. But does it bind to our state too? Well, no, it doesn't. Because what happens upon oxygenation is that the two beta chains move closer together, leaving insufficient room for BPG. So it cannot bind to hemoglobin's R state. Now let's talk about the importance of BPG and when it's synthesized. In fact, red blood cells attempt to generate more BPG to help prevent tissue hypoxia in conditions of low tissue oxygen concentration, such as high altitude in case of airway obstruction and pregnancy hypoxia. So the accumulation of 2,3 by phosphoglycerate decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen when hemoglobin is in T state. And eventually, this mechanism increases the oxygen release from red blood cells to tissues. Let's see how the binding of BPG to hemoglobin will influence the oxygen saturation curve. In the following graph, we have two curves. The pink is for a person on a sea level with a concentration of BPG equal to 5 millimol per liter, and the blue curve is for a person adapted to high altitude with a concentration of BPG equal to 8 millimol per liter. As you can see, when the concentration of BPG increases from 5 to 8 millimol per liter, the curve will shift to the right. 
So, when the concentration of BPG increases, the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen decreases and stabilizes the T state. Of course, P50 will increase because the affinity and P50 are inversely proportional and the curve will shift to the right. Of course, when the concentration of BPG decreases, the curve will shift to the left and the, F, uh, and the R state of hemoglobin will be stabilized. So, to summarize, in this video, we have talked about heterotropic allosteric effectors of hemoglobin, the H+, CO2, and BPG. All of them were found to decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, and from a physiological view, these negative effectors are beneficial since they, they increase the supply of oxygen to tissues. Now, to list the conditions that shift the hemoglobin curve to the right, we have the acidosis due to high concentration of H+, a high partial pressure of CO2 and a high concentration of BPG, while an alkalosis uh, and, the high, uh, and the low concentration of CO2 and BPG will shift the curve to the left. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe.